Welcome back to Pandora Field, everybody. As today, the 8 and 13 A's take on the 8 and 13 Pirates. It's a split series as the Pirates put a walloping on this team earlier. Lucas Giolito on the mound. He has not had a great season thus far, though he does have a win, but a 540 ERA. He opposes Gavin Stone, who's 2 and 1 with a 363 ERA. He's having a pretty good year. Seth Brown comes up in the bottom of the first, and this ball goes out. Bye-bye, Birdie. Holy Toledo. Seth Brown needs that to jumpstart his season. That's his sixth homer of the year, 357 feet, and I think he feels the pressure from Bucky Carver. There's a nice strikeout from Lucas Giolito to get through the top half of the second. Ian Hop in the top of the third. Big signing from the Pirates in the offseason, and there he goes down on the fly ball. Adalberto Mondesi, though, gets a hit in a 2-1 ball game in the top of the fourth. That's going to tie it up at two. And Drew Jones, the big prospect received for O'Neill Cruz, goes down swinging in the trade between the Pirates and the D-backs. Jose Alvarez in the game now in the top of the six, and Andy Rodriguez gets a nice hit into left field. The throw is not in time, and we're tied at three in this one. Johan Oviedo pitching now to Gary Sanchez, and that is in right field. Easy fly ball. That ends the seventh inning. Tied at three. Nick Madrigal with a runner on third base will get the bloop into right field and pick up that RBI to give the A's the lead once more. Dylan Floral looking to close it out. Gets the strikeout of Adalberto Mondesi. That's two strikeouts for him, and that'll bring up Drew Jones. And ooh, should have been a strikeout, but it's a walk. Here's Cabrian Hayes, and he will hit this to shallow center field. Tapia with a long run, but he makes the catch, and it's an Oakland A's win 4-3 to three to take the series 2-1. to one. Dylan Floro with his sixth save of the season. That win got our A's to 9-14 and, and still sitting in the basement of the AL West. Now on to City Field in Flushing, New York, where the Mets are actually below 500. They haven't gotten off to a great start, but Max Scherzer, still an ace pitcher, still going to be tough to play against him. And Reed Hoffman is back off the injured list, but unfortunately he is getting out to shallow center field. So with him gone, that will bring up Seth Brown, and he goes down swinging. That's the top of the first inning done, and Shintaro Fujinami, the starter for the Oakland A's. He's having a great beginning to his year. 2.16 ERA and four appearances is nice. Starling Marte, though, going to ruin the day already with a leadoff base hit, and he will find himself on first base with nobody away. Got to watch the steal, of course. Brandon Nimmo goes down looking silly on a way outside pitch. That'll bring up Pete Alonzo, and he is going to infield fly this one down first base. Seth Brown makes the play. We're through one. No score still in the top of the fifth, and Bucky Carver gives this thing a ride out to left field. This one up against the wall, and it is caught. Wow, what a play out there. Carver can't believe it. He thought he had it. Starling Marte comes up, A's up 2-0. He will swing and miss with a runner on first base. Zach Jackson just out here providing great innings of relief. Look at that. Nimmo goes down swinging again. Two strikeouts to his day. And now Jackson up against Jeff McNeil. He gets him on a call strike three. McNeil did not like it. He is very upset, but he's through it. Dylan Floro coming in to try and get the save. He gets Alonzo, the polar bear, on a strikeout. That'll bring up Frankie Lindor on a 3-2 pitch. Slow grounder to Leo Farrell. He takes a while to get this one going, and Lindor is safe. That'll bring up Brett Beatty, and Beatty puts it in left field. Hoffman giving it a chase. He can't get to it. Not even his speedy legs could get there. That is going to bring Lindor all the way around from first. To cut the lead in half. Paven Smith now. Ground ball over to Nick Madrigal. They'll take the easy out. There's a runner on third. 
Winning run at the plate, though. Ronnie Mauricio down to Iglesias, thrown on to first, and the A's will get the win at City Field. The series was tied 1-1 at that point. We would end up losing the series one game to two, but this is the one win. In scouting, Castaneda's report is not yet done, but we do discover four pitchers thanks to Harvey, and Shelby got one infielder discovered. Moving forward, it's time to scout some more players because we're getting close to the draft. And Richard Graham is unranked, but he's second on our board. And if he's this good, wow, we gotta know. I'd like to see Cabral, a third baseman, as well. The scouting comes back, and Cabral still needs some more time, as well as Graham, just a little bit. But you can tell Graham is looking like a steal. But look at Castaneda. He's impressive. And we then decide to replace his spot with center fielder Jonathan Richards. Back to Pandora Field we go in an AL West matchup between the A's and the Mariners. Battling in that last place basement position, the Oakland A's won two against the Mariners. They'll look for a sweep here with Giolito again on the mound, again looking to right the ship in his season. 3-0 Mariners in the top of the fifth with Giolito on the mound. He gets a called strike three there. J-Rod couldn't go around without getting called. Jose Iglesias in the bottom of the seventh. That's shallow, and that is caught out at shortstop. Still, runner remains at third, and this is laced by Gary Sanchez all the way off the left field wall. It ends up being a single for Sanchez, but it is a ribby. Richard Blyer comes in. He's not having a great year thus far, especially against left-handed batters. And here is one in Jason Givens. But Givens is going to take this thing out to center field, and it is caught to end the seventh inning. What a long run and catch. Paul Seawall coming into the game. He is having a horrid time against righties this year and a great time against lefties. Here's a lefty, but he beanballs him in the back. Reed Hoffman's been hurt enough this year. Chill out. Here's Nick Madrigal. He goes down swinging, and that's one away in the bottom of the eighth. That brings up Seth Brown, and Brown goes down swinging as well. What can Brown do for you? Well, nothing today as he goes down swinging. Here's Bucky Carver looking to be a hero, but instead it's a dribbler. And that's easy to put away the eighth inning. So into the ninth, we got to deal with their closer, Andres Munoz, who is a perfect nine for nine in save opportunities with a .93 ERA. And there's Rymel Tapia taking it out to right field. This one's all the way to the corner. And Tapia's going to find himself in second base with nobody away for Leo Farrell, who will swing and miss. Thrown on to first on the pass ball. That's out number one. So with a strikeout for Munoz, that brings up Jose Iglesias trying to bloop this in right. It is not going to happen. It is caught. And attempting to tag up, get to third, safe. So a chance to bring home the runner at least. It's Gary Sanchez. And of course, like I said, he could ruin a wet dream. And the Mariners will take the win 3-1 to to avoid the sweep. Luis Castillo was just incredible. And Giolito still having a rough go early in his season. So Graham scouting is done, and he looks like such an absolute steal. Cabral is looking developmental, but I'd like to see that last 5% on him. And Richards needs more time for sure. So we replace Graham with Lyle Chavis, who, yes, is a closer. But if he's as good as he can be, he could be generational. Now we go to beautiful, historic Camden Yards to take on the Baltimore Orioles. And Seth Brown sitting at eight home runs on his season with an 837 OPS. We are looking for him to really show out this season. He knows Bucky Carver's chasing him for that first base spot. We're taking on the young stud, Grayson Rodriguez, who gets the strikeout of Nick Madrigal in the top of the first. That's his first K of the day. Seth Brown in the top of the first. He gets it started right away. A 99-mile-an-hour fastball that he jumped all over, and Seth Brown takes it out to right field. It is gone. A ninth home run of the year for him, 433 feet. And you knew it from the thumbnail. Seth Brown was going to show out today. Jose Suarez on the mound. He's having a great season thus far. 321 ERA. We're hoping he can continue as he gets Seti Mullins swinging. Mullins with a 309 average to this point in the year. Ryan Mountcastle goes down swinging as well, even with a runner on first base. Seth Brown comes up in the top of the third, and this one's hit really well as well with a runner on second base, and it is gone to right center field. 
Brown with a two home run day in his first two at bats off of Grayson Rodriguez. His 10th home run of the season. That one traveled 421, and that's a 108 exit below for him. Seth Brown swinging the bat well today. Adam Frazier takes this one right over the glove of Jose Iglesias into left field. Hoffman having trouble out there fielding. We know he's a poor fielder. He is not out there because he's a good fielder. It's because we want our lineup to be strong, which it has been so far. Anthony Santander goes down swinging, though, and that'll end the third at 3-1. Seth Brown comes up. Does he have another home run here with two away? No, that one's caught easily out in center. And it's a 3-2 game later on in the top of the sixth inning, and that's a bloop perfectly into center by Leo Farrell. I don't know how he does it. Jose Iglesias comes up with two on in the top of the eighth. This one's going to bloop into right. Lands right in front of him. And that'll bring home an RBI as well for Jose Iglesias. Gary Sanchez could add to the party. And look at this. Giving it a ride to left field. It is off the wall. Not quite over the wall, but Gary Sanchez will take that compared to what he has been doing in these videos. 6-3. to three. Sionel Perez comes into the game. A 135 ERA in 10 appearances. He has been really good for the Baltimore Orioles. And he's going to need to be good here. Jason Gibbons goes down, swinging, and Siona Perez gets him through the eighth. And that'll give him a chance at least. Ramon Urias has a chance, and he will hit this right back up the middle. That's going to drive home a run as Tapia's throw is not on target. It is six to four. With two away in the bottom of the eighth, James McCann and Farrell splashing the leather there at shortstop. Bucky Carver in the top of the ninth with two on. And the old Buxta taking it out to left field over the glove. And there you go. Look at everybody just rounding the bases. Hoffman's going to find his way home, and it's 7-4. to four. Rymel Tapia looking to continue the rally, and Tapia is going to not get this down. It is caught. But here you go, attempting to tag up, and they got him at the plate. They got Seth Brown. What a gun on the outfielder, and that leaves it within three. It is still a save situation for Dylan Floro. He does get the save, his 13th of the year. And the A's win the opening game of a three-game set, 7-4. to four. Richards is fully scouted, and he looks nice, but too much like a lot of the outfielders we already have with speed and contact. Cabral is still a crapshoot with really wide ranges that don't quite nail his potential to B or A, so he's very risky. And the new additions to our scouting is Robbie Peterson, who looks like a nice all-around shortstop for the future, and Julio Nivar, who looks like he could rock the ball to next week. Such a great hitter, you'll be willing to hide his bad defense at first base if he reaches a potential. When that round comes back, it's Chavis who is done, but he looks risky as well with poor walks and homers per nine. He's replaced with Domingo Chachin, a starter who looks like he could be incredible. And we love playing here at Pandora Field, so we're back as the Red Sox and the A's are both under 500. Seth Brown has been tearing it up now. 13 home runs on the season. 871 OPS. Ryan Cusick we saw him make a brilliant first start, but it's been all downhill from here. Newfound glory style. It's a 7-3-4 ERA for him. He opposes Garrett Whitlock in this one. 2.58 ERA for him. He's having a much better year. And he's 4-3 and three to show for it. Luke Mayle just going to take it looking. Getting through the middle of the second. Scoreless, but the Sox are up in the top of the third. And there's Trevor Story going down swinging. Six strikeout for Cusick, even though he's losing. Nick Madrigal comes up with two on, two out in the bottom of the third. But unfortunately, Nicky can't get it done for us. That ends the third. Here's Leo Farrell in the bottom of the fourth. And Farrell's going to get this one to drop. Coming on home is the RBI, and it's 3-1. to one. The Red Sox already got that lead. Jace Peterson, though, playing a game finally. It's been rare that he's been in the lineup, but that is going to bring home an RBI as well on the double. So 3-2 as Jace Peterson just rocked that thing into the gap. Jason Gibbons comes up with two on, two out, and Gibbons down the line to first. That one's thrown on to the pitcher covering. There you go. Hobie Milner coming into the game, and he's got a 3.66 ERA this season in 21 appearances. Not horrible. 
But his splits are weird, and Reggie Rossi taking advantage of his pitches. And Reggie Rossi, that's not a guy that we expect to see hit home runs. In fact, that's his first of the year. 373 feet, 96.5 exit velo. He's not even that hard of a hitter. He is a pure contact guy, but he gets us on the board again, and it's 4-4. Down, bottom of the ninth, it's Jason Gibbons with two away, gets himself on the bags, trying to give us some hope. The Red Sox have had enough of Hobie. They're going to bring in Buck Farmer, who is 3.79 ERA in his 16 appearances. Is Buck here to fuck? Well, he's here to get Reed Hoffman out as they go for the covering pitcher. That looked a little weird, but it gets into extra innings we go. And look at this one down the line in right field, and Gibbons isn't going to get there in time. That brings home the free runner, and it's 5-4. to four. So Zach Jackson going to come into the ball game. 318 ERA for him. He's got 14 holds and 18 appearances. Jackson's been way better against lefties than righties. He's got a lefty here, and it is a shallow fly ball. Hoffman's going to come on over and make the play. That'll send the runner back to second. So Enrique Hernandez comes up. He's 0 for 3 on the day. Make it 0 for 4 as Madrigal will get him out. And 2 away in the top of the 10th for Yu Chang. 0 for 3. Again, make it 0 for 4 as he gets struck out by Zach Jackson. John Schreiber looking to close this one out. He's 12 of 12 on the year. Hasn't blown a save yet. Commentator Jenks, we're hoping. 0.73 ERA for him as well. Seth Brown, 0 for 4 on the day, but not this time. Seth Brown not only will score the free runner, but himself to walk it off and win the game with his 14th home run. Do you believe it? Unbelievable performance in this video by Seth Brown as Zach Jackson ends up with the win. John Schreiber blows the save, gets the loss. A's make two errors. They still win. This is Moneyball, baby. We don't care how we win the games. What do we care? They get on base, they get hits, and they hit dingers. And Nevar's scouting is done, and he is looking really good. Peterson, not as impressive, but solid enough for sure, especially for an unranked prospect. Catcher Rico Calderon and second baseman Rafael Chavez were added, and Calderon ended up coming back a sure low B potential with a pretty good overall, not bad, while Chachin came back looking like a decent bet as well. The new players added were starting pitcher Mike Berry, who added an insane range of overall and potential, and left fielder Marco Hernandez with boom or bust potential himself. Chavez looked like a low B potential with 50s overall, so no thank you. And Antonio Castillo, a right fielder, took his spot to be scouted. Now, Mikey Berry was done being scouted, and he looked really nice for sure. Hernandez was close to done, but we were done with him with that low of an overall range. No thanks. Right fielder Craig Swan and starting pitcher Ramon Cordero became our new looks. Oh my, Castillo. Ew. Looks so bad. The draft is coming soon. Who did you like out of all these scouting prospects in this episode? Let me know in the comments section. Next episode, we draft. Thank you, channel members, for going above and beyond in support. But thank you for all of your support on the series. Keep liking, keep sharing, keep showing out in the comments. I love you for it, FG fam.